Alrighty, ho there my lovies. Welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous and I'm Shorty Vaughn. No, I'm not standing in a hole. No. Yeah, I'm not down on my knees or anything like that. I'm four foot five. I like to cook budget meals. And you know what? Turkey Day is almost upon us. Yay, hooray. I'm cooking a turkey and a ham today, but not for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving, we're going to my sister Jackie's house. Yeah, one of my baby sisters. And she's the baby baby. Anyhow, we're going to her house. She has five kids. And um, it, we're going to be just a whole house full. Yeah, but she's used to it. So it'll be all right. Yay, hooray. I'm cooking a ham. I'm cooking a turkey today because I got good buys on both of them. I'm going to smoke them out on my Traeger. And what are you thinking? We're just putting our grill away maybe. We've got low temperatures. Nope, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and it is a bright and lovely 75 degrees today. It is actually become our perfect grilling temperature. Hey, if you see a man in the back window here, that's not Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers. That's just Andrew. He's poking around in the backyard doing some stuff, and let's get my turkey ready. Now, I got my turkey for $0.99 cents a pound with a $25 purchase. So, actually, we will say that that makes it $1.25 per pound, and that is still a great bargain. I've got a little bit over 13 pounds, and I'm going to cook it. We're going to eat it today. We're going to eat it tomorrow. We may eat some on Friday. I'm not quite sure. Um... But the rest of it, it's going to go in the freezer for another day. And the same with the ham. You don't want turkey tonight or tomorrow. You can have ham instead. Got my ham for 99 cents a pound. Yay, hooray. I'm super excited about both of them. Let's get down to it. Hey, Americans. Last year, we produced 5 billion pounds. Billion with the B. 5 billion pounds of turkey. 4.8 billion of those five billion pounds were consumed in the United States. That's a whole lot of gobblers. Anyhow, I love the pageantry of Thanksgiving. I like the presidential pardon of the turkey and I don't know where they go out to live up the rest of their lives, but you know, they got a pardon. It's not off with their heads. Yeah, I like the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, yeah, that, that'll be playing in the background. We don't watch football. Do you all watch football? But, you know, it'll be on at Jackie's house. That's for sure. Her husband comes over. That's the first thing he, that's the first thing that he wants to know is, can I turn the football on? Like, listen, if you can find the channel, go for it. Have at it. Yay, hooray. All right, I've got lots of news for you, too, so let's get going. All right, this is my bird. He's pretty good looking here. I have gone ahead and removed both wings from this turkey, and that is really easy to do. So if you think about a wing being like an arm, it is a ball and socket kind of a joint, and I just rotate it up until I hear that certain crack that you hope you never hear from your old shoulder, own shoulder. But once you hear that, it's pretty much just taking your knife and removing the skin, and that ball is gonna pop right out of the socket. Now, I didn't throw mine away. Uh -uh, you know better than that, I hate waste. But I don't like messing around with the wings. I don't think they're especially tasty. So they have gone into my crock pot with all of the stuff that I yanked out of the inside of the bird, you know the neck, the gizzards, the liver, whatever parts that they thought I might want or need, went ahead and took those out. I have thawed this bird very thoroughly. It took me almost four and a half days to thaw this 13 pound bird. So if you haven't taken yours out of the freezer yet, PDQ baby, you gotta hurry. Now I've taken some butter out and I'm gonna throw one stick of butter on the inside of my bird. Just the whole thing. There you go. Now, have I done anything special to this bird? I washed it. I took the stuff out. I popped the wings off. 
and um, really and truly that's going to be just about it for me. Um, I have brined my turkey before and yeah it was pretty good but it was a lot of effort and I have soaked it and I have cooked it in a paper sack and I've used a roasting bag and this that and the other thing and the best thing that I can tell you is don't overcook your bird and then it's not dry yeah I you know it I've had mixed results with all of them some better than others um, I've roasted it in the oven I've smoked it on the Traeger we've done it on a barbecue just over briquettes um, my mother always cooked hers in a brown paper grocery sack she swore by it you know I swear by it. just don't overcook your bird and you'll be fine and I'm just loosening the skin here because I do want to put my other um, stick of butter underneath the skin just to make sure that it stays moist and delicious and this is easier to do if you don't have nails and you know what if it trips you out baby don't do it it'll be fine it'll be just fine it's 75 here so my butter is more softened than if it had been right from the refrigerator but it's not especially like soft soft milky like it would be in the summer I'm not worrying about it. I'm also not going to season this very much because my butter is salted. That's all I could get at my Albertsons. Um, all they had remaining was salted butter and that's going to add plenty of salt to this for it. I'm also not going to season it very much because a lot of this is going to be going inside the freezer for other applications. And I'll be adding plenty of seasoning to that food. So this is going to be a little bit of a plain Jane turkey. And that's okay with me. Now, if I was going to season this very thoroughly, um, like if we were going to be eating it for Thanksgiving or what have you, I would just add that to my butter and then just go ahead and slip that under the skin. And that would be just fine. This dark meat doesn't really need the extra butter because, you know, that's the moist, juicy, delicious part. That's our favorite part. But I'm going to do it anyhow. Can't hurt a bit. What would I season it with? Well, probably thyme and rosemary, poultry seasoning, that kind of a thing. Slip my hand up the side and take some of that butter and get it on underneath that skin. This doesn't bother me a bit. I had a friend, um, dear lovely friend who was afraid of the turkey and she would call me on the phone and she would say, are you going to do my bird for me this year? Yes, I would do my, do your bird for you this year. And I would go over there and, um, yeah prepare her turkey for her, get all of the butter worked underneath of it. One year she wanted it spatchcocked, and basically that's where you would remove the backbone and then just lay, splay it out to cook. It will cook very rapidly that way. Now if you're having a hard time getting your bird thawed, that might be the way to go. So just take some, um, poultry shears and just go along that backbone and go ahead and just remove that entirely then your turkey will be able to lay out flat it will cook in half the time um you know maybe we'll do that with a chicken i'm just gonna go ahead and get this whole thing all this leftover butter just rolled around on the skin here like his Getting a little massage, just a little extra love. Yep. So we've had we've had big life changes over here. I'm telling you what, this has been an exciting month. It yeah, really, really and truly has. So I haven't had a few videos out over the weekend 
because my baby sister Melissa moved in with us. So she and her dog. So we're no longer a family of just two. We are a family of three humans and two dogs. She brought her dog with her. His name is Boots and he is a blue healer and he is just a bundle of energy and I'll tell you what we're having a great time just throwing the ball for him and yeah he could do it all day long and him and pigs they're learning to be great friends it's a little bit of an adjustment for everybody and you can just move that butter around underneath underneath there gravity will take care of it too I'm not worried about that one bit okay there we go I'm gonna go ahead and get my turkey hands all washed up. We're gonna get this ham and this turkey. I gotta get the ham out of the refrigerator. We're gonna get the turkey and the ham and we're gonna go get it out on the grill. And this is my ham. This is almost a nine pound ham. I'm super excited about it. I always try to buy a ham with a bone in it because I want that bone for a big pot of soup beans or split pea soup, whichever one. They'll both be delicious. And that smoked flavor that it's gonna get from the Traeger is going to make my beans extra delicious. Yay, hooray. This is actually a fully cooked ham, so we're just gonna be smoking it and kind of warming it up, and we don't wanna overcook it either. So I've got my, I got my big meat here all ready to go out on the grill. I'm excited about it. Yay, hooray, let's get this baby going. All right, my lovelies, well, we've got our ham and our turkey here on the Traeger. I've got it set to 325 degrees. I'm going to let the ham and the turkey both go um, until they reach 165 degrees. Now, I'm going to cook them at 325 degrees. I'm going to say that ham is probably going to take two and a half hours, and I think the turkey is probably going to be closer to three and today I am smoking with a combination of apple and hickory wood and I think that's going to be delicious and lend a lot of flavor to this um to these to these meats yay hooray it's not gonna hurt one darn bit and yeah now there's three of us to feed and two dogs yeah life it changes on a dime you got to be ready to roll with it all right, my lovies, well, while that um, turkey and that ham are out there smoking on the Traeger, I'm going to go ahead and get my turkey stock going. Yeah, I love chicken and turkey stock. I like to make it at home because it is relatively free. You can can it or like I do, you can just put it in containers and freeze it and then pop it out as needed. And there you go. Then you've made the most of all parts of your birds, whether it's chicken or turkey. For me, the preparation is the same. So I have some carrots in here. I also have my wings in here. And then I have the innards. You know, when you stick your hand inside the carcass and you come out with all the weird, unidentifiable bits, the neck, the gizzards, all that stuff. Yeah, I throw it all in there. And I've got some baby carrots. Now, this was the end of a package. They were looking a little bit dried out, but they are perfect for this application. I have one whole onion, and I have not even removed the skin. I'm going to put the whole thing in there. I have a little bit of celery that I've washed up, and it has seen better. Yeah, nobody wants to eat that, but it is perfect for my stock. Maybe you have a veg scrap bag in your freezer and you're going to pull that out to make your turkey stock. Yes, please. And thank you. Um, I'm going to fill this to cover with water. So I know that this crock pot of mine usually takes about six or eight cups of water. And I'm not salting mine. Um, one, because we're on a low sodium diet. Number two, whatever I use this for, I can season at that time. And that's going to work out just fine for me. And 
there we go. That is about all the water I'm going to be able to get into there. And I am going to go ahead and turn this on low. And I'm going to park it, you know, over here in the back, close to the end of my counter, out of arm's reach. And I'm going to let that go for 24 hours tomorrow. I'm going to strain it twice. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it in my little containers and get it in the freezer. Made some room for it, just especially. Yay, hooray. So, yeah, my sister moved in with us. And it was so nice because my brother-in-law, Robert, and my two adult nephews, um, Matthew and Charlie, helped her move. And then Julie and her daughter, uh, you know, the one I call Cookie, and her boyfriend, Chris, they helped her move. And I got to see all of them. And they came over. I gave, It was like a little impromptu family dinner. I had pizza once again. And I got to give everybody great big squeezies. And, oh, it was good. It was really good. So we got her all moved in. And I'm glad to have her. That's for sure. She's been a big help. Yay, hooray. And honestly... She's just my baby sister. When she was born, I told everybody that that was my baby. And there's not, we're very close in age, that that was my baby. And I used to just carry her around with me everywhere like my little doll. And I would feed her. And I thought, yeah. Anyhow, so we were um, companions in the nursery. My mother believed that children slept in the crib until they didn't fit anymore. And then they went to go sleep in a regular full-size adult bed. So you were in the crib for a very long time. Her crib and my crib side by side. And she, and, and she would crawl over and she would get in the crib with me. And um, even when we moved into, you know, the adult human bed. Can I sleep in bed with you? Yes, baby. Come on, get in here. And yeah, she was always my baby. I'm so glad to have her. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm gonna feed her up tonight. I'm gonna feed her some turkey and some ham. We're also going to have honey glazed carrots with it and a broccoli and cheese sauce because we're gonna have all the extravagant, you know, Thanksgiving parts over at Jackie's house. The mashed potatoes and the gravy and the all the butter yeah lots of butter and um dressing green bean casserole corn pudding you know the whole shebang so we're just eating kind of lighter tonight you know a little piece of ham little piece of turkey some nice veg keeping it a little bit on the lighter side but you know honey glazed carrots that's going to give it a great holiday feel we're going to make those here in just a few minutes. Yay, hooray. So tell me, what about your Thanksgiving? What are you guys going to do? Are you going to make a ham? Are you going to make a turkey? Do you make um, a roast instead? Maybe like a nice beef roast or a pork roast? I'll tell you what my Albertsons had on sale. They had pork spare ribs on 99 cents a pound too. I, I went to go get some and they were sold out. I'm not even sure that they got them in, to be honest with you, because I went first thing, you know, on Wednesday morning, the crack of dawn, putting my order in, they were out. Andrew went back later that night and the next day still out. So I might, you know, see if I can get over there uh, before the sale ends on Tuesday night and see if I can find any of those pork spare ribs. But if I hadn't gotten a turkey at a good price, if I hadn't gotten that ham, we would be having 99 cent pork, uh, pork spare ribs and they would be absolutely delicious. I don't think you have to be locked in to the turkey and ham. Some people are ultra traditional. I can respect that. But yeah, if it was a bargain, that's what we would be having. How much salt would I add in this um, stock if I was going to salt it? Well, I would say probably about one half teaspoon per cup of water. That's probably what I would do. Um, some people would like it more salty, some would like it less, but I think one half teaspoon per cup of water, so that would be just fine 
for however many cups of water you were adding in there that should be plenty of salt that would be my recommendation um but you know of course you do you baby now how else you could season this salt and pepper that would be pretty traditional you could put the poultry seasoning in again that would be fantastic but i think it's going to have plenty of seasoning with just the carrot celery and onion keeping it simple i can always add things when i thaw it out to use it i'm gonna go ahead and get my carrots going here so i've got half a bag of carrots and i like these baby carrots just fine um, these are what is normally on sale over at my Albertsons and the whole carrots are usually twice the cost. So, whoops, I've got butter fingers today. Literally, I've washed them and washed them, I promise. Anyhow, we like honey glazed carrots and I'm going to make a bag and a half so that we have plenty and these are you know, easy, quick, delicious. I have about three tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and add to this. This is our splurge item today. With tons of butter. Yes, please and thank you. Also got some, you know, clover honey. And I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of that. That's gonna be a about 35 carbs um, give or take but we are going to split this up over probably today and tomorrow for eating and I'll just adjust my portion size to account for those extra little bit of carbs won't hurt a bit get those all in there and I'm just making them in this little casserole dish here that has a little lid and honestly, I'm going to microwave them for probably about 12 minutes. And that's probably how long they're going to take. They'll just go in there. They'll do their thing. They're fork tender. They're good to go. This is one of my favorite ways to eat carrots. Oh, it's going to need a little bit of black pepper too. Forgot about that. That little bit of black pepper will just absolutely set off that honey and make that extra sweet and delicious. Yay for Ray, it won't hurt a bit. Yippee skippy. So what's going to be on your menu for this holiday season? Inquiring minds want to know. What are your side dishes going to be? Yeah, now my mother would put on the whole show. It was always a ham and a turkey and sometimes also a beef roast. Um, yeah, two pans of stuffing, dressing, so that nobody got stabbed. Mashed potatoes, like a big vat full. Gravy, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You had to have the gravy, cranberry stuffing. There would be corn, there would be green beans, yams. Um, oh goodness, desserts. Four or five different kinds of desserts besides what anybody else would bring. Um, oh, salads broccoli salad a jello salad you know something in the mold yeah do you all make any of the jello molds i love them andrew he's been working his little butt off he's been taking down um his little air conditioner for his office now we have central air but he likes it extra cold so he has a little extra air conditioning just for his office and since we have officially ended summer that's right we've had like four or five days in a row under 80 where our summer is done we are now into our fall slash winter and hopefully we get four or five good months but he's exhausted aren't you honey are we coming over yeah i oh. am exhausted you are exhausted <laughs> say hi to everybody hello everyone mm. all right well that's enough <laughs> smooch a Rooney's baby. Love you go into your office? For the time being, yes. Turn the fan on and cool off. Poor man. He was just out there working. I feel bad for him. I'm not much help nowadays, so, you know, he's kind of on his own. Plus, that air conditioner 
it's above my head. So yeah, I wouldn't have been much help anyhow. Anyhow, yeah, my mom would put on the whole dog, the whole pony show, and it wasn't just, you know, my mom and dad and nine kids. No, no. So my older sisters, you know, as they got married, my mom did not like to share the holidays with her in-laws at all. No, my sisters, they're married families. They were all invited to Thanksgiving. Yeah, bring your whole gang. What's a couple more? No big deal. So my mother would have like a big turkey roaster and she would roast her turkey in that. And then she would have another roaster and that's what she would roast her ham in. And then she had double wall ovens and those would just be, yeah, it was just a constant. Put a dressing in, take a dressing out, put another dressing in here. You're making cornbread, you're making biscuits, candied yams. Yeah, just in and out, in and out. And then there was a warming drawer and everything would just get piled up. It was a lot of food. It was a lot of dishes. Now my mother, very fancy woman, we always ate on china and she would get the good silver out and you'd have to polish it before, you know, the week before Thanksgiving and, um, you know, linens and placemats and table runners and uh, plates and chargers and place settings and you know, the whole shebang. And I'm thinking we should just eat on paper plates and use plastic forks and throw it all away at the end of the day. But not my mom. No, she went in for the whole nine yards and there were usually somewhere between 30 and 75 of us and she would cook and work herself to death. Absolutely. And then she didn't like for you to do the dishes because that was her good china. And, you know, she needed all the place settings that she could get for everyone. And yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. She really enjoyed the Thanksgiving. She liked having all of her kids and grandkids. And she was only going to do it one day. That was Thanksgiving. And um, yeah, everybody came and there was plenty of food and plenty of conversation and you know you got to try to stay away from those dangerous topics yeah especially in our family especially with so many people lord have mercy anyhow i don't cook for a bunch of people um on the regular like she did um but if we have family dinner here next year if Jackie does not do it I can guarantee you it's going to be paper plates and plastic forks and knives absolutely and potluck because I think that's the way to go yeah so one person doesn't work themselves all to death I know some of you out there you're going to be working a lot yeah bless you just keep on going you can do it I believe in you Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade one of my favorite parts of the holiday. I'm going to be celebrating its 99th anniversary this year. Yay, hooray. Now, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and America's Thanksgiving Day Parade for, um, out of Detroit. Um, both are tied for 99 years. Um, that's cause for celebration. There's not many traditions that last that long, but the oldest Thanksgiving Day Parade in America is the Philadelphia Thanksgiving Day Parade, and that is actually four years older than Macy's or Detroit. So hello, Philadelphia, and you know what? Maybe I'll get out there to see you sometime. This stock, it's just doing what it's doing been checking on it keeping my eye on it you know just a little bit and um smelling fantastic can't beat that with the stick do you all watch the parade here's a little interesting trivia for you did you know the first turkey trot dates back to 1896 out of buffalo new york there were only six runners and they ran along a dirt trail yep absolutely 1896 fantastic good for them have you ever done a turkey trot i've never done a turkey trot i am not a good runner i never have been and you know 
like in PE when we had to run the mile, I never thought it was fair because two of my steps for every one human step, you asked me to run a mile, that's like two miles. I think I should only have to go around so many times and then just be done with it. I still can't run a mile, but I don't worry about it so much now. And if you see me running, something is really good on sale or somebody's chasing me and you should run too, baby. American Thanksgiving used to coincide with Canadian Thanksgiving. It wasn't until Abraham Lincoln changed the date to um, match the date of the Pilgrim's Landing. Yeah, that we started celebrating in November. I kind of wish we would go back to October. That would just make the holiday season a little bit longer and you could squeeze a lot more stuff in. It could be a lot less stressful and a little bit more fun think we should get a petition together. There are three U.S. towns named Turkey, one in Texas, one in North Carolina, and one in Kentucky. Hello to Turkey! Okay, my loveys. Well, my ham just came off of the smoker, and I can only tell you that the smell is fantastic. It's got that beautiful smoky outside. It's going to be tender and delicious and juicy on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and cover this with a little bit of foil. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and cover this with a little bit of foil and then just park it. Just going to let it rest for about 15 minutes because you know it's been through an ordeal. It needs a little bit of time to be its best self because I believe in you, baby. You're going to be delicious and you're going to feed us for many, many meals because that was almost nine pounds. And then we've got that delicious, you know, ham bone in there. Yeah, I can, the first um, cold day, I can already taste the soup beans and cornbread or some split pea soup, hot diggity. That turkey is coming up right behind it. And the smell, it is just overwhelming. Poor little pig, he's beside himself, boots is about ready to have a nervous breakdown. Um, I did these on the Traeger just because it's a beautiful day outside and because we like smoked meat. I, I like turkey right out of the oven, out of the turkey roaster, what have you. What I don't particularly care for are those aluminum roasting pans over at the Dollar Tree. I think Dollar Tree has fantastic stuff, but those roasting pans for me are so flimsy. If you're gonna use one of those, put one of your good cookie sheets underneath of it for a little bit of stability because you don't wanna waste all your time cooking a bird, how expensive it is, and you get it out and that buckles on you and your bird lands on the ground. You might have to eat it anyhow. Shh, don't tell anyone, they'll be okay. What they don't know won't hurt them a bit. You know, three second rule. I don't usually believe in it, but if you drop your bird on the ground, just keep going. Just go with it. To me, the most important piece of equipment that you need in cooking a successful turkey is a thermometer. You should cook your turkey to an internal temperature of 165 degrees when temperature is tested right between that um, thigh and that leg because really that's the biggest thickest part of that turkey kind of like me anyhow i've got an old-fashioned thermometer here you know the kind you can buy over at the dollar tree for a dollar 25 and i know some people think you know this is old-fashioned but this is fairly foolproof but you want to make sure that it's calibrated correctly so that you are getting an actual read an accurate read on your bird so I've got here just a simple glass with ice in it go ahead and you know let that go for a few minutes so my water is nice and cool this water will be at or around 32 degrees so I am going to let my thermometer sit in here and come down from room temperature and if it is hitting 32 degrees we're gonna say it is a-okay if it's not, that is easy to fix. 
So mine bottoms out at 40 degrees. So it is about eight degrees off. If you turn your thermometer over, you're going to see like this little nut right here. And that's got a little pair of, you know, a little wrench or a little pair of pliers, whatever you got. Go ahead and get a hold of that, that nut and then go ahead and turn your temperature down to 32 degrees. Pop it back in the water and make sure that it stays there. And then you have calibrated your um, thermometer. Yeah, 32 degrees, that's the just about average temperature of ice water. And then, you know, there we go, at 32 degrees. Now I know that I'm gonna get an accurate read on my turkey. And that really is the most important part of a successful bird. Don't overcook it. Yay, hooray. All right, so we've got our thermometer all calibrated. Now I've got a little bit of ice water to drink, gay. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Yippee skippy. All right, Andrew, the smell's killing you. Yeah. I've just had a little bite. Oh. I know, I beat you to it. Let me slice you off a little bit. Yeah. A little, little pre-dinner yum-yum. Oh, great. Oh, nice and juicy oh, on the it's inside. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Go for it. Okay, cool. Go for it. Oh man, that's a that is the smokiness of this. This yep. is wonderful, people. Yep, that's pretty tasty. Yay! Yippee skippy! Oh, excellent. Don't talk with your mouth full. Mm. All right. <laughs> Well, my turkey has come off of the traker. I think that looks beautiful. Absolutely. It's reached 165 right where the thigh and the leg meet up. And I just think that is one spectacular looking bird. Yay, hooray. All right, I'm gonna cover it in foil. I'm gonna let it rest 10 to 15 minutes. Hi, Boots. Hi. Come here, come here, turn around, turn around. Say hi to YouTube. This is my sister's dog, isn't he cute? Yeah, his name's Boots. Anyhow, he, he came into all the smells. Oh yeah, you're happy about it, huh? Yeah? Okay, well we'll see what we can do. Anyhow, I'm gonna cover this with aluminum foil, let it rest for 15 minutes. You know, somebody cooking you up, it's an ordeal, yeah gonna get this one resting and then we're gonna eat like fat cats yay hooray okay well after letting this turkey rest I think that looks delicious yay hooray I've got one dog crying I've got two humans over here in the wings just waiting for a little taste and I'm just gonna go ahead and slice this off And then I'll go ahead and just make some nice slices to get us going. Yay, Ray, who wants a little bite? You don't want a little? Oh, Andrew, looks like it's gonna be you, baby. Here, let me slice you off a little taste. All right. Mmm. That's moist. Uh, it's so juicy like it is moist. Yeah. This is this is awesome. Do you know why that turkey's moist, Andrew? Because my lover girl's an awesome cook? Yeah, no, because I only cooked it to 165 degrees. Mm. Because I had a thermometer. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, hooray. Alright. Thank you.
All right, that's enough kissy face. They're going to think that we don't do anything besides make out. That's the truth, though. <laughs> Whether you're having ham, turkey, or roast beef, if you're having a pot of soup beans, if you're having bologna sandwiches, you know what really matters is that you're enjoying the day with people that you love, whether you're doing it on Thanksgiving, the day before, the day after, next week, what have you, any day can be Thanksgiving and you can serve anything you want. So long as you're with all your lovies, give them a great big squeeze, give them big old smoocheroonies, yay hooray, isn't that dog cute? All right, my lovies, be good, be careful, look both ways, I gotta get my carrots on. We're gonna have some turkey and ham. See you next time.